I'm going to read from the book that no one can pronounce, Your Nomi's Sandals. I think that's how you say it. I'm the only person I've ever heard say it. <laughs> but I, I, I actually uh, got, the, got the word from a book by Robert Graves, but I never heard him say it. <laughs> I, I'm going to read from this book. It came out last spring, but I wrote it in uh, 2006, 2007, actually. So it, it's old work, but it, it seems to still be relevant. And the, the, it's divided into two sections. Um, the first section is shorter poems. And the second section is the poem, Uranomi Sandals, which features a couple of characters that popped up in the writing of the shorter poems. So I'm going to read some of the shorter poems. I'm going to read the beginning of the long poem. And then I'm going to read a poem in this folder. And that's the reading. <laughs> I'm going to have a relationship with the microphone that's <laughs> very complicated. <laughs> Is the sound good? Yes. yes. Okay. When you arrived, the emigrants arrive grave and with torches, a billion of us. In dreams, you're compelled to be in the drama you're in. I was sleeping with him at his desk. Each had our own greyhound. His desk was a bed. The dogs were asleep at our flanks. Oh, savage and tender achings. The immigrants mean to escape his parchment breakfasts, his rococo edicts, his bloody fingertips. I left because I was sad. I thought, what part of the world can't be mine? I am an earthling, aren't I? Why can't I live anywhere? The immigrants try to escape their hellhounds. Side effects are unclenched. I have the identity of wrath. Where does it come from? I am inconsolable underwater under your ugly armature. We need protection and soldiers. Oh no, we had those at home. It doesn't work. We are roaming the globe to get away. They keep coming after plastic cops, not smart enough to be bitter or sit down with their dogs and smoke. No immigrant makes sense. I don't. I wasn't born to make sense. I remember a corpse without interest. I am the living present no one knows, no one greets. Welcome to the living present, to your infidelity to the past. I'm adorned with my nightmares to please you. What else would I have? You once did this too, remember? When there were no maps and you walked, changing everything. This trauma kept in a medicine cabinet. I heal myself with it. I use my motion to correct my regret. I open the motion to behold you, send postcards, play the tune of bravado. I rub motion on all my wounds. Is no one in love with me? Billion immigrants have each other. What will we do with our mirrors blackened in fire? Hotel room. I crumble and hide a paper to be read later. Keep it from you. We the two who trust each other, we say. But we don't know each other well, and, and in intensity, char. Your glasses are an older man's now. I want to be you, the well-known filmmaker. Your mainstream face, it's light towards me, meaning you love me. What am I hiding? We've made love in this hotel room, but I can't let you see my poem. Of course, you're leaving me here today, goes out, and now I can read it again. We're secretly married, but more secretly, this poem's mine. The soul submits to no one, thus is often denied by its face. This sonnet, as if by you, in its earnest convention, might sell a million if filmed. I'd say I love you, but more than that has happened. If you are like my people, are you faithful? If you are my audience, will you return my love, even if I change? If I changed my manner, my love wouldn't falter. The soul submits to no one, though my face submit to you in instance of passion. Should I continue to love you, not leaving this room till you return? Should I continue to sound like you? If I show you the paper, I admit that I have changed to your style to gain favor, but who has changed? Can you hear that I will never betray myself 
It's in the way I say anything. I would imitate something of merit. I enter a country, a room, to do that watching my dissolution, rejuvenation from a lucid cell within, that eternal intelligence remaining the same, my secret, never yours. My city. The nightmare of treason had recohered, had come back thrilling. My apartment in the Grand train station rendered me a part, as truly as if by mandate. It seems as if I've always lived here. It's a city of politics, manifs, bombs. I have plotted myself to take over hearts and minds because it's so easy, but I didn't want the responsibility of tyranny. And I know pain in a maiming fashion that will immobilize me when it's time to do more than stare at your forehead, time to cut it open and insert the story. Consider me as both Antony and Caesar, and know that the famous word honorable has been changed to formidable. No, that's not it. Horrible, spelled W-H-O-R-E-A-B-L-E. -E. Women have betrayed themselves by evolving vaginas. They selected for those organs. By some theorists, it is propounded that one's wishes prior to conception carried backwards from a future of perverse reasoning and scrolled out motivation are at work. Caesar asked to be delivered by Caesarian. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. But I have betrayed Brutus and Cassius, who plotted against me in full train station light in my city. No woman has a city. I lower my blinds so I can't see them through the window or they can't see me. I may have left fingerprints as the betrayer. I betray by knowing they would betray. I shouldn't know that our country is ruled by forces secret from those who contain them. But I am so apart, how could I be instrumental in exposing, you, exposing your plot to murder me? In the poetics of our times, many have paid attention to the treason of choosing one word over another. I walk amid the finally shattered glass, broken to articulate my reasonable but passionate speeches to you who conspire against my power. The man who tried to pick me up at the Gardelest yesterday was shorter than I, quite ugly. He asked for directions, then said, viens avec moi. I have passed a lifetime unable to move freely, think without interruption, or be friendly. Freedom of thought, motion, impulse remain unacceptable. I want to found a city of free minds mingling. Are there no free minds except for mine? <laughs> Story to the River 2. I am provoked by realism's cell phone to call up the Minister of the Interior. I need my interior oxygenated, more relaxed. Excellent, he breathes. I can expel the illegal invaders of yourself, madame. I have calculated you, you need to get rid of tens of thousands pretending to be light, when factually our deft economy selects urban grisaille as soul. But monsieur, I want you to leave me. I need an undisheveled emptiness within. I seek amatory absence. I later tell the Seine, not any betterment. He thinks because I'm white, I'm not an immigrant. Having arrived 14 years ago, collapsed feeding tube on the floor for no good reason. Who needs a whore-driven reason? That's the job of the clown fuck philosoph. Mine is to sing this preposterous animal tongue I was born in. A youth has blown snot out all over his head in the shape of our noble continent, a green beige topological map. He must symbolize me. My interior is now free, exteriorized expat. A lot of people must have come here only to embroider thrilling arteries with companionable cars, their colors and auditory tones. Really, you have to want to buy one. This city has everything. I am a phantom. I once dreamt of a pale horse who spoke and told me death was an articulate beauty, but didn't mean death as we think of it, for he wasn't dead. Perhaps we have not thought of anything. You escort to your borders a form of courage. How brave to come alone, without money or flag. Vous êtes courageuse, someone said to me, because I had continued to live. 
This is my story, River. Its details are new locations of my wrathful and graceful hours as I walk casually beside you without appointment or compliance. Do you recognize this world? Several men internal to my sense of consciousness touch the briar, work at ensuring that I recognize this world. If you touch it, you are real, and the flat vermilion petals of the concomitant rose affect your heart. The men are compressed versions of millions of men, like the filmmaker with your enormous glasses blanketing funeral parlor eyes, though I love you, but you are too many. I don't know if the gears of me would work without the men inside. You are very negative today. We could hardly record you. If you see a fish hook, do you see it, or are you hooked on how a man said to pay attention in order to keep rendezvous with fame in the eternity warehouse, the smiling hook said. We can't allow asylum to just anyone who has been tortured, or can't grow wheat in the desert caused by our autos. Asylum, an internal man tells me, is a virtuous diamond the gears can't provide, partly a state of mind not allowed outside class. The heart glides reading chapter and verse. He told me to look at it. The men who do the gears are definitely different inside the powerful. He can't really film them, for he is one of the powerful. I'm not sure I still love him in this chapter, for I am forsaking tenderness in order to see, see if I still works. To Frank, these are my wartime experiences that no one has considered, occurring while one reads my poetry, as I am dead. The Pacific War pacified no one, and that's not my face, on the figure in mind, grimed with tropical combat. It's the cover of an edition of The Naked and the Dead. I don't want to talk. Their piquant questions are too scholarly for one who's chatting with her gynecologist over the stirrups. Nude is a nut, I told her I had two new books of poetry out. How are they being received, she asks, and then that I grip her finger with my vaginal muscles in case of leaks. <laughs> the layers of war come to order and proclaim themselves discernible, each decade with its enemies, mustard and wasabi, signifiers and confession, whatever that is, a faked statement after torture. They snag us in their roaring gears. No one in your generation has ever killed a person. It breaks the body to push out babies. I got red stars all over my chest. Some of the immigrants, machete users at age 12, won't make it. The union's too unwieldy. We can't recognize any more faces as our own. Fact is, we don't know how to be human. The poet watches a grenade explode. I'm communicating with the dead again. It makes the gears go crazy. I have just undergone a bona fide 1970s panic attack. The poet was already dead by then, and I never met him anyway. Panic also temporarily discombobulates the gears. I might die, but maybe I'll just give the perceptual frame a good whack. The poet tells me there's a real problem with a human person. It can't cope with its genius. The poetic, for an example, an extraordinary art delineating our being as it's lived. No one listens, he says, not even my best friends. I have to fight them. The world is at war with poetry, he says, never smiling, beneath the ludicrous green netted helmet. I'm adrift from my goals at last, winning the war. They were purpose purposefully stupid, then tugged at you. You've always been nice, after all. He play-acted, couldn't stand it, the way you write only one war novel because it continues. My birthday's full of dust I'm going to throw on the machine. He's always been a part of me, hasn't he? In the back room, we too are creating an international culture of the ancient word. Foundation. I don't comprehend how to be French or anything else. They say I'm an American. I am among us with requisite facial organs and stories on my skin. I can't seem to fall asleep. 
an ethos of an hour ago, old as the dust of intention to love all debris. All this debris covered Cartier. How can I found us without screaming? The Minister of the Interior unlucidly arrests the tattered violets of the banlieue, for they sense there is nothing to do but wear their deepest purple cagoule. Who sees flowers among these configurations? It isn't a movie, Jack, it's a moment of defiance. And if you frame it, you still can't invent our forms that leap in lightning streamers. And so inside myself, I vandalize your comforting earnings. I want to be paid for my emotions, don't you? I want to be paid for everything I've gone through. I want to steal your respectability and change the titles of all your poems to inserts in an ass. You smell like someone who would leave a shattered dancer on the sidewalk to answer your cell phone. Ancient wolf howls on the unconcerned marble steps. Boys, we got into the University of Iceberg. Our fathers and mothers are happy with frosted eyebrows and white lips. Everyone will now enter the Chinese restaurant. I am allowed only one dish, a fish paste and pale celery. Why do you get two? Have you read this cretinous review of last year's riots? We were the authors of the violence, rocking ourselves to sleep. We are the gentle wheat to be scythed later, growing near the train tracks, 200 kilometers an hour. Speed grazes us with its beauty. A human being stutters and is unremembered after he leaves the screen. Okay, this is the first few pages of Yuranomi's Sandals. In the beginning, Yuranomi, the goddess of all things, rose naked from chaos but found nothing substantial for her feet to rest upon, and therefore divided the sea from the sky, dancing lonely upon its waves. That's by Robert Graves, Greek, Greek Myths, Book One. I'm a spirit that has come a long way. Try to destroy me, you'll find I'm permanent. I'll live on, though the people fade, migrating across desecrated countries with dying climates. You're an Omi, my name. Did I create the universe? It emerged from my head and my feet. I'm not gonna die. Time, the man chose death. But the women, too, stole my jewels, my created beauties. They mocked them the way men mock women. Dragged my necklaces of mountains and rivers across the floor of this heaven, polluting them with their jealousy. You cannot create a world of pure splendor. You must dabble in vaginal fluids, forming a mucus and spit type image of yourself like us. They ripped the surfaces from my creation. The ocean turned acid and the sun burned us up. The men, the women, who cares who did it? They all did. In all creation myths, there is something already there. It is I dancing and flirting with a scaly other. Even chaos is I. I love your terrors of darkness, and who sees it? Sex, the illusion of two. The deity who arose from my mind was a dancer. That is, moved to a rhythm with prehensile feet, poet, big brown toes, a few hairs there. You're dancing on me, said the cosmic dragon, the galactic surface of all we could see. So fucking what, she said. He wrapped himself around her, intensifying, then killing her freedom, a new rhythm. I am the goddess of all things. I am about to give birth to beauty, migrants, savage light of every kind. The light is bloodthirsty and will smash your collarbone with a spear or a bomblet. I am the dance at its decline, dear November day of stinking cars. And the same color as yellow orange, my feet stamped out on your surface, pressed from the first metallic tubes. Amber, vermilion, kissy opposites, goose turd green. Everything sprang up right away by my lights, forwards and backwards. Earth time, a human invention, is slower than bacterial time and faster than my own time, which only does beats. I am like timeless. The serpentine filmmaker, either my nemesis or lover, can be too earnest. We're dying, he says. I intend to direct a final masterpiece. I want to film thankless chaos, if that's what we're moving towards. Or is it death? It must be a quality within us. I'm bored, I say. If you cared, you'd star in my film. 
leave me alone. The world's ending. Well, I'm thinking, brooding over the first misty damp. I was there, weren't you? It's just like always, he says. I can't rely on you after millions of years. Wrap your, myself around you so you won't get away. But as you know, I'm not just here, I say. I'm everywhere. I'm staying with him in the cheap hotel of the world. I had many pairs of shoes at that time, but principally some black leather T-straps with flat soles, also a type of medium heel, but these were decorated with sequent florets, pale chartreuse outer leaf design, and scarlet petals. I took them off one night after dancing. From the darkness of the shoes sprang jealousy, fear, cowardice, betrayal, pretension, cruelty, violence. I watched them fly up with dispassion, for I am unethical. They had black, gauzy wings and small, sarcastic faces, little bitches and ambitious pricks. How can we change in order to continue as our flaws scour the globe, our habitation made desert and unpotable floodwaters? I will keep creating. The filmmaker expresses his love for me in his face, his lit up skin, for he is also an actor. Through his huge glasses, the significance that his green eyes must conquer. I am loving him back by looking a certain way too. He has to leave me to work on his movie, which will fascinate me and which I'll loathe. He is fashioning the species agreement that surfaces be non-chaotic, even when he insists he's filming disorder. His is not the world I created, for it is in time and doomed to end. Well, that's just his planet. I tell you, creation is not so automatized. The people go everywhere in the first days out of curiosity, though now we are frantic, they say. For example, the desertification of Africa pushes us towards the garbage-clogged Mediterranean. We are called illegal immigrants and turned back, but we are the people on the move as ever. I am the man you are, not a generic other. Give me succor, and I'll strengthen your land with my muscles and songs. Individual unhappiness, happiness, makes anyone act like a jerk, hating the sight of me. I am not your emotional burden. It comes from your own imperfect abilities. I am unethical and immoral, or I wouldn't have made anything. It does what it wants, after all. Then they dislike me for that. They say I'm not philosophical enough. Philosophical? The little technocratic sillies can't figure out where life comes from. It's too fast for splitting hairs, babe. You design an engine and presto cars and planes surround you like cholera germs. I can do life as an entering it, but I pull out before long. Did I create the dragon snake film guy? I hardly know. Sometimes I am almost enthralled to him, but then I realize it's time to leave, tiptoe out through the back door, go off to a planet whose creatures aren't so damned mean. One of the most beautiful things was the tattered smell of emeralds. Also, the calculation and spittle that made it malleable and endless, shapes of an Orion or Ophiuchus. The undifferentiated visionary organ navigates possibility all the time. But I can be finite like a human, sudden in the real, Real, like the delusion of credit. You get credit for what you do. You have an exquisitely individual clitoris. The storm is scorched by someone's intelligence, but whose? Why, mine, who am in all times at once. My breasts are covered with blood. You can film that, I say. Or is it light, infrared, of some dead star over there? Chaos, I continue, could be quieter than everyone thinks, almost sullen. You really have blood on your breasts. No, it's just red light, he says. The creation is intense, I remind him. When I'm in it, I reflect red. Well, I'm always in it. But sometimes I wear its color just for you. Blood's of such interest to you, them. They did a lot of killing to become themselves, the people. Not that they had to. They'd kill someone to see if he died because they weren't sure. I'd left it at that because I wasn't sure. They're pumped full of blood. Will they leave it inside or will they always try to see it? You're so perverse, he says. Oh, everyone's a critic. Leave the opus alone and no one dies. They just have to poke a needle in an eyeball, don't they? 
The people always reconfigure in the kaleidoscope of their history and hail their new direction. One is truly past caring. Their penchant for organization is always their undoing. I never even suggested that they have foundation myths, governments, justice. I've never told them anything. I make things. I thought they might like it, a world. It's not such a big deal. It isn't really all that you know if you stop and think about it. Everything you can think of, there's that too. So one of us touches the other's face. The camera's on us, he says. You want us to look like two actors, I say. Why? You can't just be yourself in a room full of light, he says. All the human migratory roots are in this chamber, mapped beneath his skin. I can remember when I crossed the wide Missouri, though there's more than one Missouri. Why focus so hard, I say. I want to cross one Missouri, make love to one body, kisses my navel. The camera is supposed to be like the sky, but I am the sky. If I break his camera, this moment won't happen. I despise it. He invented it. I'm not ethical enough to break it. I tend to let creation do what it wants. I grab my clothes, throw them on. Don't, damn it, don't mess everything up. Shit, you're such a little prima donna. The people walk everywhere observing. Birds are more talented than I am, more beautiful. If I'm like a monkey, still I can't swing from tree to tree. I can't disappear like a snake, can't live underwater, can't make honey, can't tear you to pieces with my claws. The people at first long to be as great as the other creatures. Then they begin to destroy them out of some narcissism or disinterest. They lose sympathy with, with whatever they didn't make themselves. The people have words. They use them to pretend with. There is no such thing as pretending. It's all real. No, nothing's real. You could say shit like that. You could say anything. You can believe anything to the depths of your soul or not. The people have lost their first concentration. They do what they do, dumb fucks. Um, this is called Victorious, and I wrote it maybe five years ago, and it's the last poem. <coughs> Victorious. Honey, leader, honey, from the lion's body I bring you a food or mental substance, a knowledge from the supposed realm of wordlessness, the opposite of me. Honey, leader, honey, your hair is growing around mirror shades. The only thing I see is a vibrant word. Is it a word if I know it, flash not reading it, saying it without saying it with lips or brain, but being honey, you should see there's no one here but everyone. I wanted to forget them blindly when the world began again. My double honey stark as a burnt tree when I spoke, flash, and I saw how wrong everybody had been in the old times when all we created was decorative. If I might destroy the old you, I'm extracting power from which self in order to stand for a moment above you holding my bone club, my weapon of greeting. Hello, honey. You will not go on the way you have your tone of voice, silly and maudlin, pompous and demanding. You must now learn from this word wedge your new art. Honey. As leader, honey, I am your mind leading. You can hear me. We stand counting nothing, not knowing numbers. Anyone forgot them to beg to be home. Here we are numb, for I've destroyed and rebirthed you, honey. You have nothing but this vibration. We are speaking almost silently. You have nothing but this opposite of what you were, this moltenness. None of you, my friend, but I've led you to your own heart, a place where no one has to know their words or counterparts anymore. Your stories were invented in dreams. Your eyes were full of unsubstantial legends you'd made up and attributed to the fabricated bastards, your heroes of millions. They were just you. I've ripped them out. Your soreness is freedom. Honey, leader, I'm. 
and learning a language from which you can know all others, only two native speakers left, I and I, and the I that has taken over now shows you the grid of renewal. It's a shaky grid, the cracked syntax of an earthquake. Honey, leader, it will slow down and flow like honey. After we agree to speak darkly or densely, honey, leader, grid, this language might tear you, but you're already torn. No, no overlay. All language comes from here. Find it at this time, clutching the damage we came from. It's entered strings. I pull it apart, and it reconfigures. I'm yours. What are your verbs and nouns? I am a conglomerate of anything. I speak for a joining of the already contiguous I am how we cohere, mind after death, pushing outward, honey, lava. I am your leader, says the language, or I the quintillionth and first, I the verb, I the noun, the pronominals. My death, I, honey, leader, honey, calls out silently to other honey. The grid flows like aftermath. I didn't ask, says the universe, to be born. And death says, I may have asked to die, but I can't. And we, the dead, don't die, living on, speaking origin that you'd think of as grid, never been such the part of speech is to join us in mentality. I am the serenest Samson you might know after I destroy us. Why does it begin in violence? Because you named it violence, but now you have no nervous system to hurt you. Honey, leader, honey, uncarved again with phantom pain. Today's my brother's birthday. Do I re still remember everything? But it's my day, he says. I'm finally reborn, sis, honey. That's an aside or double, a twin of telepathy. We have come to the fact of the solution. Honey, leader, unnamed shapes call out that we didn't know everything to see. Now we're inside the words we'd catch hold of. We have never heard of governance. I tell us I, the leader, the Samson, who judged us sad and inept, trivial, washed up, smothering, smothered souls groping. You had to follow me past the store of limp, spangled dresses, limp weapons. My cudgel is pure like a torch, my hair's like gray fire. Inside this honey flow, where the language is finding its nearly unfashioned form, its deeper hues, my brother's new peace, the source of our plan to go on. Leader, my shell is empty, or it's all stony, dark green. The money was nothing, the clothes were vapid. The poems of others dimming in force, the money was nothing, a joke. All the money in the world, a joke. The, the sorrow, real leader, honey, leader, honey, powers the only thing we are, an accumulation of first matter, hollow, electric, and calm. I know what it is, I say. I know where we are and are going. We are rearranging origin, its glyph and its home. We are rearranging the night plan. I, honey, leader, honey, am calling reality now. It responds to me. We are calling you to us, I, and what was once fate, the body, but is now my own malleability, the light staring, or is it something I would recognize just who I am? I want you to see it inside the beginning and our composite meaning. As for the pre-beginning, honey, I pulled down the ceiling so we wouldn't have dimensions or scale. Then there was pure action in death, which is truth. I, honey, and leader am left on the river but I have the boat. Whoever left me for trivia, but I have the boat or leadership, the honey songs beguiling you to start again, maintaining our connection. That is our universe. We are the power. We stand in pre-power, the whole thing. Before the shell body, honey, power, wouldn't you like to act now for the sake of action, not knowing why, without an accrued meaning, with words that don't drag leafage after them, I acted, honey, leader, honey, without any motive, for I was not enacted. And I arrange reality a certain way, that's all, with the hands of one of my bodies coincident in me. All night I arrange things without known shape, names or shapes. Put on your ear real shades, honey, leader, be opaque again. We are ready, everyone, everything here inside the connection. Last night you were with me because I was broken and good. And you say you are with me because I've got enough honey for you. Matter or mentality becoming words for anyone in any language or stillness we are forming entities for each other. Here in the primal blast moldenness, we have arrived at 
hurt from prior eons, ready for the mind or dream that acts. I birth new forms, hopeless and free. Any rock, any rock has a new name, and I have one too, honey leader honey. What shall we do together with these new minds and have accepted nothing, have not seen or heard it, haven't reacted, honey leader, haven't judged or been taught? We are making what we are just that. <laughs>